Nearly 1.5 million Americans sustain a traumatic brain injury, or TBI, each year. Often the effects of a TBI are invisible to the naked eye, but can be debilitating. Joining us now is John Norman, a Harrisonburg resident who is a husband, a father, and was a third grade teacher before a severe illness caused a traumatic brain injury in 2016. Thank you for joining us, John. Thank you for having me. John, would you mind explaining to us, please, how did you end up with a traumatic brain injury? About eight years ago, as you said, I was a third grade teacher. Uh, when I contracted a viral infection, not too dissimilar from the flu, but the virus ended up attacking my heart pretty aggressively, so much so that um, I went from being perfectly healthy to suffering complete heart failure in a few days. And when your heart fails, that causes clots to form the bloodstream which caused several large strokes to uh, occur, uh, the largest of which um, affected my right hemisphere, um, basically destroying 80% of my right hemisphere. Oh my goodness, that, that certainly is traumatic, not just for the brain, it sounds traumatic for your entire life. What were the side effects of that experience and how did they change your experience of life moving forward? Basically for me, um, um, I have severe deficits in my ability to concentrate, my ability to focus. Um, my attention span was pretty low. Um, I was also, I was completely paralyzed the first stage of my recovery. I had, my brain had to reform connections with every muscle in my body. I had to relearn how to walk again. I had to relearn how to talk again. Um, had to re, I had to relearn how to read and write. Um, it also affected the optical nerves. So like I lost all peripheral vision to my left. Um, so real, to really, to sum it all up, there was nothing I, I did not have to relearn how to do. Okay. Um, <laughs> what, that is an incredible ordeal and it, it clearly you've made remarkable progress to date. What did you do that actually helped you with that recovery process? Um, I think, um, when I was in the hospital, I think what helped me was that, um, I, I had a little knowledge ahead of time. Um, when I was in my early stages of recovering, I knew enough about how the brain functioned. Um, I knew enough about things that I knew the brain could um, have the ability to rewire around permanently damaged areas. And knowing that fact gave me some hope at the earliest stages of my recovery, even when I was still paralyzed and unable to speak at all. I had this deep belief that I could recover, and that hope is what kept me going at the early stages. Hope and faith, not, what, not, uh, <laughs> not overrated. Um, did, did you feel like yourself? Do you feel like yourself now? Um, I think uh, the stroke definitely affected not just me cognitively. It affects your emotions and your personality a lot. Um, me personally, I am, a much, I am much more emotionally volatile now than I was eight years ago. Um, it definitely, and it's really hard to separate what is personality and what is an effect of the brain injury. Um, like I'll wake up angry with no, for no apparent reason. Um, I'm a much more, you know, I'm, like I said, emotionally volatile. Like it, in the um, in the hospital, um, it was very severe. Um, it's gotten better over time. Like in the hospital, I basically had the emotional self control of a three year old child. Um, <laughs> so it was um, it's pretty severe. Um, it sounds like alongside the challenges, you um, have maintained a good amount of self awareness. Um, in, in the process well, as yeah, well. I, I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually quite lucky in that regard. A lot of right hemisphere stroke patients lose that self-awareness of their deficits. And I was very lucky that I did not lose my self-awareness. So I'm actually, it was actually beneficial in my recovery that I could tell my therapists, I need to work on X, Y, and Z. And a lot of right hemisphere stroke uh, victims uh, lose their awareness of their deficits and it's up to the therapist and their family members to convince them that they have to work on certain things. I mean, that can be a real detriment to their recovery. So when we are talking about uh, people dealing with disabilities, some are more apparent, right, to the general public than others. When people look at you, um, w are there any giveaways? Are there any signs that will tell them this is a person who's dealing with a disability? <laughs> I think one of the harder things about me, particularly with my stroke, is that at first glance, um, I can kind of pass off as somebody who does not have any severe disability going on. What's hard is that it, all that 
I, I can do a lot of things that other people can do like, in short spurts. Like this, I can have this conversation with you now. What is hidden is how difficult that conversation is for me to have. Um, a comparison that I ha- that I give um, when I when I talk about this, it's like everyone else is walking on smooth pavement on, under a clear blue sky, and I am wading through waist deep mud on, with, with with thick fog all around me. If I can I can get to where everyone else is going, but the amount of effort required is like astronomical. Hmm. Um, so um, and that stays hidden a lot. And unfortunately, there are millions of people in your same situation or similar situation. What is it that you think is necessary for people to receive the consideration and the accommodations that are needed in the work world and just in everyday life? Um, I think awareness in general is really strong. I think it also really helps. Um, I currently sit on the board of a local agency called Brain Injury Connections of the Shenandoah Valley. And we have case managers that work with our clients to um, to provide whatever adaptive technology that they need. I know that like I needed adaptive technology because I lost the use of my dominant hand, uh, my left hand um, from the stroke. Um, so I think having an expert, like a, a case manager from an agency like Ranger Connections in their life to help them find the resources that they need to um, to, to, to meet their goals, mm-hmm. that will help out a lot. We hope that you'll continue to improve. And in your process, you are also helping other people by serving on this board. How can people find out more? It's Braintree Connections to Shenandoah Valley. It's BICSV.org is their website, and that's where you can find out about them. Thank you so much, John, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching. Continue to follow Virginia news and stories by subscribing to our VPM YouTube channel.